In order to run Ray 3 Play for the first time, I've installed it, licensed it, and I've specified a log file and a polar. Now, I need to go through to the step of uh, the config file manager in order to help Ray 3 Play understand how my log file is formatted. In our case, we have an expedition log. So run the config file manager by clicking on this button here. It will prompt you to uh, create a first file and try to automatically detect a lot of fields. So just click OK on the suggestion and save first version of the config file. And now we're going to go more in depth on how to configure this. In the first tab, it will ask me how my date and times uh, is formatted in my log file. So first thing I want to do, I can click on view log extract. And I'm going to tell it I'm, I'm working on this expedition log. Click open and it will open a notepad with, a note, and with, a, with an extract of the log so I can look and, uh, and see how things are, are formatted. So as we can see in an expedition log file, the timestamp is this funny number here and it corresponds to the label UTC. Um, so I will tell it that my date and time is in a single field. Otherwise, I would tell it they're separate fields. In some logs, it's the case. And also that the label corresponding to my date and time is UTC. If I drop down here, I've got all the possibilities, all the labels it's found. It is UTC. And I have to tell it this is an expedition date format. Moving on to latitude and longitude. If I go back in my log file, we can see that I've got fields lat and long. So they're separate, so I will tell it they're in separate fields, not in a single field. And then by default, the config file manager had, has tried to guess which labels um, they correspond to. He's done that correctly. Second step, what is the format? It can either be degrees dot degrees or degrees minutes dot minutes. In our case, it's clearly degrees dot degrees, so I'll leave it as is. Move on to the known variables tab. The first four are absolutely indispensable. Um, you cannot do without those. You cannot run Rift Replay without those. A true in angle, true in speed, true in direction, boat speed. I go through all four of those and specify which uh, label in the log they correspond to. Uh, once again, the config file manager has correctly guessed those. Then I've got more optional ones, uh, like heel, heading, course, um, parent winds, force day. You might not have a force day sensor on your, in your log or on your boat. In that case, it probably will appear as being not used. That's perfectly fine. And there's further things down the road, a bunch of performance variables. I suggest that you leave every, every one of those to calculate it. That means that uh, race replay will recalculate VMG upon loading your log. And it will also calculate percentages uh, relative to your targets and your polars uh, once it threads the polar. If you are racing, you might have a countdown um, the number in, that, uh, in the log. This is where it's specified. And then we move on to the other log variables, and that's all the other labels it's found in the log, which we haven't specified previously in the previous two tabs. An example would be, uh, let's say, air temperature. I might be interested in air temperature. Uh, I'm going to rename it. I want it to appear in uh, Race Replay as Air Temp or maybe Air, just Air TMP to make it short. This is a scalar. I only, I only need one decimal and the units are degrees Celsius in my case. Next, calculated variables. There's a whole bunch of things we can do in here, uh, such as calculate and derive variables from other variables read in the log. We can create average variables. Uh, for example, I would like to have a sliding average of my true in speed and I will call it true in speed 30 seconds. So it's going to be averaging during 30 seconds and it's going to be a centered average. And it's going to average which variable? Well, the true in speed. Here's our first calculated variable. You can also do calculations with uh, mathematical functions, adding, and, and lots, lots of uh, different stuff. So I'll get into that later on. Manual entry variables. Uh, these are, are uh, performance variables for which there are no sensors on board. Uh, one such variable would be sales, sales up, but this has got a specific uh, a tab for it. Um, 
another one uh, might be your uh, who is helming, for instance. If you're interested in, in, in looking at performance of who helms better, then I can create a new variable here called helm. It's going to be of type list, and then I need to specify lists. There's going to be John is one of my helms, Anna also, and uh, Mike, Mick is doing that. Uh, click add. And this is a new variable, and so when I run Rage Replay, I'll be able to document who was helming when, and then possibly do some performance analysis on that. Um, other such variables could be ballast, could be stacking, could be all kinds of things that are not measured, but that might change during your sailing session. Moving on to options, we need to specify wind speed and angle bins. Don't worry too much about that for now, we'll talk about it later. In the meantime, just click on True and Speed Bin from my Polar. My Polar is the next edition, and it's this one. So it's going to use those values. And for True and Angle, leave as default. Sailing Mode and Target Tolerance, I suggest initially you leave it to 10 and 15. And what this does is that every time uh, Race Replay reads a data point, it's going to look at its True and Speed, True and Angle, and say, well, if this is within 10 degrees of my Polar, I will just globally characterize this point as being upwind. More on that in uh, later videos. Sail inventory. This is where you can declare all your sails. I'm going to add a masthead geniker called MG1. Add it. And possibly I can choose a color here and add a weight. You can also manage all those within Race Replay. So I'm not going to spend more time on that. And then finally, I want to talk quickly about boat day config. One of the configs is going to be a location and event where you were sailing. I'm now going to add a property which is crew because on my boat, I'm going to add some fields. On my boat, we quite often are full crew, but sometimes I do two handed sailing, and some of the times I go solo sailing. Once I've done that, no, it's enough items. I click OK, and I've got a new property called crew which really will apply to every sailing session. And uh, it was going to ask me whether I was full crew to hand in solo. Later down the road, when we get to database work and looking at the data of a whole season, that means that I will be able to compare performance data between fully crewed or solo. Another possibility would be that uh, I've changed keels from last year. So I would add a property, I would call it keel add two fields, one called keel 2019 and one called keel 2020. Add this and if I went back I could go back analyze 2019 data and specify that it had a 2019 keel and then analyze 2020 data in the same way and then later on down the road when I get to database I will be able to do performance analysis looking at this field keel. Click OK, save my config file, overrides the initial one. And I'm ready to click Go and start uh, running Rage Replay for the first time. 